In this video, we will look at a joint probability distribution of two variables, which are random from the perspective of me as a teacher. And we will see what we can learn about these two random variables and their independence. So the two variables we're going to look at are how well my students in advanced statistics have engaged with the learning resources we have provided them and on the other hand the second variable how well the same students have performed in the first online test in this course so let's look at the data here we have a joint frequency table okay what you see in these in this table is observations altogether there are 813 students who have taken the online test and we're looking at how much they have used the lessons and quizzes for the topics uh, which were covered in the online test and how well they have done. Now, both of these variables I have transformed into categorical variables. So we're having low, medium and high use of the lessons and quizzes. It's not really important what the actual boundaries are for that. I have just decided what these boundaries are. And then for the online test, we are having also low, medium and high grades. Again, the boundaries that were used for that aren't so important. Uh, you could change the boundaries and you get substantially, you will get the same result. So there were 813 students. So for instance, there were 31 students who had made very low use of lessons and quizzes and who got a medium grade. And let's pick another number, 114 students who made medium use of lessons and quizzes and got a high grade. Altogether, there were 275 students who, got a, who had medium use of lessons and quizzes and 383 students who had a high grade. So you can see that uh, using the medium of color, I've highlighted where the marginal distributions are. That's a marginal dis distribution for lesson and quiz use. And we have the overall frequencies here. And there's a marginal distribution for the online test grade. And the overall frequencies are here. So we are seeing three distributions here. The green marginal distribution for the online test grade. That is one complete uh, random distribution. The red distribution, which is a complete marginal distribution for lesson and quiz use. And the black distribution in the center, the joint distribution for, yeah, the joint distribution of these two random variables. So let's work with probabilities or relative frequencies. Okay. So how do we calculate them? Well, what is, for instance, the probability that, let me delete all of these values. So we know when we create these probability tables, we have one over here. Right? So that's for sure. So let's start with that. What's the probability that a randomly chosen student made low use of quiz use? Well, it's that number here divided by the overall number. And now I'll put uh, the dollar signs around the overall number to make sure that is fixed. Because now I can copy that cell across and what you now have here, for instance, is 363 divided by 813. So this is now my marginal distribution. And I can copy that up because what that then will calculate is the joint probabilities here. And we'll check a couple of formulas to make sure they are right. Yeah, and they are all right. Now I've destroyed the nice color scheme. I'll resurrect it in a moment and I'll copy these formulas across to also calculate the marginal distribution for online grades. And that is also correct. So let me just get the colors right again. This should be green and this should be black. And let's have my line nice 
lines in the table back. Here we go. Okay, so here are now our probabilities. And these are the observed joint probabilities. We may now want to ask the questions, are these two random variables independent or not? Now, I as a teacher, of course, I'm telling you all the time, they are not independent. Students who do more work on lessons and quizzes will get higher grades. So I am predicting that there is a correlation between these two and that means these two variables are not independent. Now what I am predicting is that there's a causal relationship. You do more work in the materials we have provided you that will result in you doing better in the test. So I am telling you the causality runs from lesson and quiz use to the online grade. Now what we will do now in the data is that we will investigate whether the two random variables are independent or not. However, what we will not be able to do from looking at the data is to confirm that there is this causal relationship. And I will get back to that at the end of the topic. So let's go back and look at the table. These were our observed probabilities. What we now do is, I'll copy this table again and put it down here. And I think I have to do this. Okay. So what I now want to do is, I want to, I'll take these drawn probabilities away in the middle and I want to figure out, okay, what would be the joint probabilities here if the two random variables were independent? Well, how would we calculate the joint probability for this year that a randomly chosen student has low usage of lesson and quiz use and gets a low test result? Well, it would just be, under the assumption of independence, just the product of the two respective marginal distributions. So it would be that probability times that probability. And then equally, what would be the uh, joint probability here under the assumption of independence? It would be that probability times that probability. And we can continue. Oh, hang on. There is a mistake. You perhaps have seen it. When I copied this table, this thing also copied a new formula. So what I want to do is I want to take these values. So I'll do control C for copy. So control C for copy. And I go here and I paste paste values. So I saw that something was wrong because these probabilities were extremely small. And then I compared these probabilities and you see these probabilities are also not the same. So these I will also have to copy. Control C and here I do Control V. So now we have the same values here and here. Okay? Because I want to keep these marginal probabilities and want to use these to tell me what would be the joint probabilities under the assumption of independence. So for each of these, I can now calculate that joint probability assuming independence. So it's a little bit pedestrian, there's a quicker way, but I'm not gonna do this here. You can try yourself or you can fix the references in a way such that you can that you can copy the cell and you can do that but then I'd have to explain that and I don't want to do that in this table in this video. Here we go. So these are now all the joint probabilities. And let's actually test if that is a distribution, these values should sum to one. So you can test if that doesn't sum to one, you've made a mistake. Okay, so here we have the probabilities and I should say that assuming independence. Okay, so these are the observed probabilities. Observed probabilities, these are 
in the next table are the probabilities assuming independence. Now you can see they are clearly not the same. The idea here is that if the two random variables were independent, the probabilities we observe, the joint probabilities, should be those we should should be equal to those we expect if the two variables were independent. Now they are not. Let's actually calculate a third table or a fourth by now. Uh, sorry, control C and let me put that here where we just calculate actually the differences. So for this table, we're not going to need these marginal values. So I'll take them away where we calculate the difference between these probabilities, perhaps to, to see a little bit easier. Sorry, not C14, but this one minus that one. And then I'll just copy that. I copy that across. Okay, so here we can see the differences. For instance, for that low, low field, the difference is five percentage points. We see 11%, we would expect 6%. For the high, high field, the difference is almost six percentage points. We see 27%. We should expect 21% if the two random variables were independent. So the question is, are these differences big enough to actually make us decide or come to the conclusion that these two random variables are not independent, that they are dependent? My prediction as a teacher, they should be dependent. Making this decision we can't do yet. We will use that information in a later lesson once we learned about inference, statistical inference. Then we will use exactly that information to actually make that final step and come to a conclusion, are these two random variables independent? But that conclusion will be based on these values. I promised I would get back to the issue of causal relationships. From the data, we have seen that there are significant differences between the probabilities, John probabilities we observe and those we should expect given independence. That means that we will most likely conclude that these two random variables are dependent on each other. However, what you cannot learn from looking at that table is whether it is indeed the fact that those students who use the lessons and quizzes more, learn better and therefore get higher grades. That causes these two random variables to be independent. That is, of course, my conjecture as a teacher. I'll give you these resources. We put in a lot of work in producing these resources and help your learning so you can get better grades. But it could just be that it is just the students which are better, have a better attitude to, to studying, which use the lessons and quizzes more, but they would have achieved a higher grade anyway, even if they didn't use the quizzes. That is the difference between showing a correlation, which is what we have done, or we've showed dependence, and most likely that will also mean correlation here, because there will be some linear dependence, and showing that there is a causal relationship. And in this course, we will not learn the techniques to establish a causal relationship. You will learn that in econometrics or quantitative methods. But hopefully I've whetted enough interest uh, in that such that you consider doing that if you don't anyway have to do it. So thank you.